Hello and welcome to my channel. On this channel everything's about sewing, crafting, painting and general DIY things. I like to create whenever I can and sometimes I make videos about it. Today I'm taking you along as I'm making a kid's wizard cloak including a lot of machine embroidery. If you like this video please leave me a comment or a like and if you want to see more of my videos in the future please subscribe to my channel. And now let's start. Before I start cutting any fabrics, I need to scribble down what I have in my mind. Not to get a pretty picture, but to get a rough idea. I knew that this was going to be dark blue with embroidery of owls and stars. And I also knew that I will use this kit's pattern, simplicity number 1037. I always trace printed patterns. The only patterns I cut directly are PDF patterns. I just like to keep the original, if I mess things up. Then I started cutting my blue fabric. In this case I did not make a mock-up, which is unusual for me, but I knew that this will be wide enough for my little wizard to wear. I embroidered the front jokes first. My clear pattern sheets are quite handy for that, because I can easily figure out where the design will go. I just cut this roughly at first. Embroidery can alter the shape of a fabric piece and that's why I only cut these after the embroidery is done. Also, this way they can be hooped more easily. And here's the first design stitched out. After cutting away the stabilizer on the back, I can now check the cutting lengths of the pattern piece. And then I finally cut the fabric. You can find links to all these designs in the description box below. And here are both joke pieces embroidered and cut. Moving on to the back piece. This gets a nice big embroidery design. Therefore I cut it on a fold. In the original pattern this would be cut in two pieces. Now this beautiful old design gets stitched out. The machine does this all on its own, but sometimes I just sit in there in front of it and are uh, still fascinated by it. Done and oh so pretty. Just been away for a few minutes and it became a cat bed. Looks comfy though. Here I'm taking care of a little loop that happened during the embroidery. I used this handy tool called Fadenfee in German. It basically catches the little loop and pulls it to the back. I love it. After the embroidery is done, I'm cutting a back piece. The original pattern has two pieces for the back, but I cut them on the fold. I decided that it needs more embroidery on the back, so I made a quick design of stars and put it below the owl. Here I'm marking the center. And now put it in the oven. Just kidding. Before I start the embroidery, I trace a few times to make sure the design goes right where I want it and that the needle doesn't hit the hoop because that would be very bad. Removing the template and go! I used a material called Myla to make the stars shimmer and shine. The fill stitch is very light and open so the Myla can shimmer behind it. I'm holding it with my tweezers until the machine knocked it down with its first stitches. After the design is done, I can easily rip the excess miler away. Caution, it's hot. No, it's not. I'm just kidding again. <laughs> what the bag looks like after embroidery. 
here I'm cutting the front pieces, which in this case are the same pattern pieces as the back. I just don't cut it on the fold this time. I also cut the sleeves and I just had barely enough fabric. I actually had to piece one together. Next thing to do is stay stitching the neckline. This is done to avoid the neckline warping and stretching out. To save some time I sometimes make these lovely fabric garlands and I cut them afterwards. Now it's assembly time for the fronts. Side. I marked the seam allowances because I had to exactly match up the center point. I made the back yoke in two pieces and the lower part on one piece. The pattern has just a seam running through both. But for the embroidery I thought it's nicer to make it in one piece below the yoke. I snipped the seam allowance to be able to pin the yoke to the back piece. With the front and back assembled I was ready to do the shoulder seams. I also pinned the sleeve to the sleeve hole, which is actually now the hole in this case. This coat is sewn like a shirt with the sleeve sewn to the shoulder and then the side seams and underarm seams are done in one go. After that I cut the seam allowances with my zigzag shears to prevent fraying. Because I had so little fabric left I had to cut the sleeves in two pieces. So I have also an upper arm seam, the original pattern doesn't have this. You see, the patterns are just a loose guide for me. <laughs> this is the lining fabric I used. It's a poly taffeta from a stash. I lined the hood and the sleeves as well as the upper part of the coat where the embroidery is. I stitched the lining fabric to the sleeve hems and turned it inside out. I hand stitched the sleeve lining to the lining of the main body. The hood also got some embroidery. I used spray adhesive on the stabilizer, that's what you hear in the back. By the time I filmed this part I received my new fancy magnetic hoops. Fabric is hooped within seconds. They are awesome, but make sure not to pinch your finger. After this was stitched out I added some rhinestones by hand. I also used a decorative stitch on my banana to add a little border to the edge. I closed the seam on the hood and then I added the lining. Et voila, finished hood. I'm putting the hood and the coat together. Off camera I did the hems and added a closure. The finished project means cleaning the room. Ah yeah, I forgot to mention this guy. It's 3D printed by my husband and it was actually the piece that inspired the design on the coat. Ah, and I also made the head. And now let's have a look at the wizard himself and his amazing magical new coat. Ah 
I hope you enjoyed my video. Please consider subscribing and until next time.